coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. Hello, and thanks for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. So today I want to talk to you about the cost of distrust in the workplace. It's hard to measure, but it, but it's a it's a great cost. When we build trust, cost goes down. When we create distrust, cost goes up. It's just that simple. So in today's episode, I want to share to you, I'm diving back into my quote file. And I've pulled out a lot of quotes from Stephen M. R. Covey. And Stephen M. R. Covey is the author of The Speed of Trust. I've I've got a a series on on that, uh, where a four-part series where I talk about trust in previous episodes on this podcast. So you may remember that name. I share about him frequently. I think I even mentioned his name last, last episode. But my third favorite book, of all time is the speed of trust subtitle of that book is the one thing that changes everything. So I've been reading every day for 16 plus years. That book still at number three on my list because of the principles in there. A lot of people I've told that too. They went and read the book and just because I talk about it and they didn't really like the book, but there's a lot in the front of it that I didn't really care to read. I read through it, but there's some good stuff in the middle about the 13 trust behaviors and, and, uh, counterfeits to those behaviors and and th- those sort of things. And so anyway, that's what I did the uh, four part series on previously in, in on the podcast. But anyway, I'm going to share a lot of quotes from him today that relates to things that cause distrust in the workplace and the cost. And I'm going to reference some quotes of his where he's referencing research on the, on the true cost. And it's really, it's super, super high. But I don't really worry about the numbers. I don't worry about the charts and the graphs and all that sort of stuff. The research study that professors have done and all that kind of stuff. I, I know the impact. What I know, I know all I need to know. Distrust adds cost to the organizational's uh, output. It's going to cost you more. Whatever the organization is outputting, it's going to cost you more when there's distrust. When there's more trust, those costs go down. And and I've validated that throughout my career. When you think about it, you probably can do the same throughout your career. So let's dive into these these quotes. I'm going to share my thoughts around the quotes, and and, uh, I'll let you know when I start to quote and end to quote from Stephen M. R. Covey. His dad, by the way, a lot of people don't know, they mistake Stephen M. R. Covey for Stephen R. Covey. And Stephen R. Covey was his father who wrote The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That book's actually my number one book. And if you're wondering what falls in the middle of these two, it's the five levels of leadership from John C. Maxwell. So that, that's my top three list right there. So let's kick let's kick this thing off. And I want to share with you this first quote from, from uh, Stephen M. R. Covey. He says, For leaders, teams, and organizations that operate with high trust, such trust becomes a multiplier and an accelerator of their ability to execute the strategy. When there's low trust, everything takes longer and costs more or gets derailed altogether. So that, that, that's the end of that quote. And, you know, when he's talking about things getting derailed altogether, I got some quotes in my book where I share, you know, when there's trust, we always know. Without trust, we may never know. With trust, we do know. Without trust, we often question. You start questioning things instead of acting because you know and you trust. When you question things, it costs you a lot a lot of time, a lot of money. Because in business, time is money. If someone's running around asking questions, trying to figure out what the truth is or who to trust, who not to trust, what they need to do or not need to do. All that's all that's costing money. There's lots of other ways it costs money, but that's a simple way. Is people not acting when they should act because they don't trust. 
Some people won't act. Some people won't take action because they they're afraid they're gonna get in trouble from the boss. Last time they took action, they got chewed out, so they just wait. But the key point is that in that quote that right there was, trust becomes a multiplier and an accelerator of the ability to execute the strategy. That's why if you're if you're in a leadership position, you, you got to be focused on building trust, creating trust in your team, with your team, and again, amongst your team. You got to build trust with all your team members, but you also got to help them build trust with each other. Life's going to get better. Most of the time when there's an issue with trust, there's an issue with trust at the leadership level, somewhere in the leaders. It usually goes all the way to the top. So Covey had this to say. He said, as the age-old question goes, which came first, the chicken, which he's saying is distrust in parentheses, or the egg, which he's saying is disengagement in parentheses. So which came first, distrust or disengagement? He says it's a self-perpetuating cycle that gradually grinds the organization to a crippled pace or even to a halt. Distrust and disengagement. If people don't trust their leaders, they become disengaged. But disengaged people don't trust their leaders. So which one is it? Like he says, right? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Which cre- Does distrust create disengagement or does disengagement create distrust? Because, see, if I'm disengaged, my leader's not going to trust me. If my leader doesn't trust me, I'm not going to trust the leader. And we get into that self-perpetuating cycle that Covey t- talked about in that quote. So as a leader, I've got to trust. If I can't trust someone on my team, as I always say, I've got to improve them or remove them. I've got to be able to trust them. They've got to be able to trust me. And in most organizations, there's no development. There's no character development. You want to increase trust in an organization, you get people to buy into character development. They start becoming better people. As we become better people, better people begin to trust us. It's just simply how it works. Another quote from Covey, he says, trying to operate in today's world with a command and control style is like trying to play tennis with a golf club. (laughs) That ain't going to work too good. He says the tool is completely ill-suited to the reality. I mean, who, who, who would literally try to play tennis with a golf club? Thinking they're going to have any kind of chance. Nobody. Everybody knows that. But there's a lot of managers in the workplace who think command and control style is the way to go in today's world. And it's not. I've seen it throughout my career, and which is 35 plus years. I've seen it as an employee working on the front lines in entry-level blue-collar jobs. I've seen it as I work my way up through engineering positions. I've seen it when I was in management positions. I've seen it as a consultant. Command and control can't hold a candle to high-impact leadership. High-impact leadership is the opposite of command and control. High-impact leadership is when you, you want to compare command and control, it's trust and release would be high, the high-impact uh, example of that. You got you want command and control or you want trust and release. That's the opposite, right? Instead of commanding you, I'm gonna trust you. Instead of controlling you, I'm gonna release you. And that's what I did as a consultant when I was logging those eleven thousand hours. I I couldn't even use command and control. I didn't want to in the first place. But what I saw was I, I got ridiculous results. Not because I was special, but these principles I teach are special. But there'd be times when these companies I was supporting wanted me, which they needed to do this. 
I, I, I encouraged them to do this. I wanted them to do this. There were times when they wanted their managers to learn how to lead and facilitate these process improvement events, these five-day events that I was leading. So I would kind of hold their hand. I would train them. I'd develop them. I would try to lead them through the process. But the greatest obstacle I had and the one that caused them not to be able to perform well was those formal authority leaders. Most often they come in and try to lead a team with command and control. They want to be the boss. They wanted to always have the answers. They wanted to always tell everyone what to do. That that don't, that doesn't work well. They got a little bit accomplished, but almost nothing compared to what I was able to do without command and control. Remember, I had trust and release. I trusted them to perform in their roles, to carry out the mission, to execute the vision. And I released them to do it. I was just another team member when I was on the team. I was just another team member, even though I was the one who was facilitating. That was my job on the team. But I didn't think I was the man. I didn't think I was better than them. I didn't think less of them. I was there to help them. And I wanted to motivate and, and inspire them to help each other. And that's what always happened. So I'm going to share some stats with you from, from Covey. Some quotes I got out of, out of some of his book. I don't remember if it was Speed of Trust or something else I read, but I got a, I got some numbers here for you that, that's based on true st statistics from researchers that he shares. So he said this. He says, with regard to trust, Gallup research shows that 96% of engaged employees, but only 40% of actively disengaged employees trust management. So think about that. 96% of engaged employees trust management. 46% of actively disengaged employees trust management. Disengagement and distrust go together. Engagement and trust goes together. So if you're a leader in an organization and you think your team is disengaged, they probably are, but you need to know why. It's because there's a lack of trust. And that's your responsibility to create that trust. Every team I led, that's what I had to go in. I had to go in and do that on a Monday. I always led five day teams pretty much all the time. Teams that I didn't know, teams that didn't like me, teams that didn't want to change, team members who didn't want to be on part of the team. That was my team on Monday. I had to build trust with these people. They didn't like the last consultant, so they didn't like me. They didn't trust the last consultant, so they didn't trust me. But I was the leader. None of them reported to me, but I was the facilitator and leader of the, of the Kaizen process improvement team that week. If I, could, if I couldn't build trust, what I already knew, nothing was going to happen. So that's where I went in, and, and, and I worked on mindset. I told stories about who I was, where I come from, what I've seen, how much I know or knew at that time that they had all the answers. That I didn't hardly know anything about what they were doing. And I was going to trust them to move the team forward. And I was going to be the cheerleader. And I was going to shine the light on those folks to the leaders. I was going to let the leaders know these folks are making it happen. I wasn't going to run around and hold my hand up like I was the man because I was nobody. I guess I was somebody. I was a team member. Covey goes on to say, and this is research is a little older, but it ain't that old. He says, uh, in the 2017 State of the Glo Global Workplace Study, the Gallup organization revealed 85% of employees globally are either not engaged or are actively disengaged at work. And I've seen a lot of research studies. This is just one I'm happen to be quoting right here from Covey. This is nothing new. It's probably still the same today, if not worse. Pretty much it's always like that. It's always around 85%. Not engaged or actively disengaged at work. All that means there's a whole lot of people that don't trust a whole lot of leaders. That's all that that's all that means right there. 
And it's, it's almost in every organization. And it's sad because all, all, all that, all that's got to change is you got to have leaders with a high degree of character. They want to grow and develop their character that also want to grow and develop their team's character. That's how you overcome that. There ain't no other way. But most of the time, the people blame the leaders, and leaders blame the people, and round and round they go. But stuff I'm talking to you about now is one of the reasons I'm on my mission. I want to help people have a better life. All people, the workers and the leaders, and the people in support roles, everybody. The only way that's going to happen is if I can motivate and inspire people to get better. And those people who choose to get better, who want to grow and develop themselves, choose to grow and develop other people. That's that's the mission I'm on. All these numbers and stats, they're, they're pathetic. Well, you know why? There's a lot of pathetic leaders out there. If you're listening to me, you're probably not one of them because those kind of folks don't listen to this type stuff. A couple more quotes from Covey related to some numbers. In that same 2017 State of the Global Workplace Study, the Gallup organization estimated the cost of disengagement worldwide was approximately $7 trillion with a T dollars in lost productivity. Disengagement globally costing $7 trillion with a T in lost productivity. That's crazy. What you need to be thinking about, what's this costing you personally? If you don't trust your leaders, what's it costing you? Because if you don't trust your leaders and you're still working in the company, it's costing you peace of mind. It's probably costing you dollars because most people are not high performers when they don't trust their leader. They don't want to be there. So they don't do as good a job as if they were working somewhere they, they wanted to be. So what you got to know is costing you in your career. If you're not leading yourself well enough that you got options and one of those options is not to follow a bad leader, it's costing you. It's costing you and your family. That's another reason I do what I do. A couple of different angles related to what I do, helping people live a better life, teaching personal growth and leadership development, personal development, cultural transformation, leading yourself and others through change, building trust, all this stuff that I talk about is to help individuals develop themselves so they can fire the boss, go find them a better boss. Also, I help the bosses, the leaders, become leaders worth following so that their team members ain't firing them because if you're a boss and you're getting fired all the time, turnover, in other words, that's causing you all kinds of frustration and stress. I don't, I don't want you going through that either. So I'm trying to hit it from both angles. I'm trying to help the team members, the workers, the workforce get better, and the leaders and the support team get better. If I'm in one company, I'm trying to help everybody, all, always everybody do it. On my podcast or videos, or my post on LinkedIn, social media. I'm just putting out content, trying to make it stick anywhere. I can get it to stick. And a lot of you, I know you, you've reached out to me. You've read my books, and I highly encourage you to check out my books. Defining Influence goes real deep into all this talk about trust and, and how to lead yourself well and how to lead others well. It was my first book. It, it's a bigger book. It's about 200. 30 or 50 pages, something like that. But you might want to, you might want to check it out. Another quote from Covey. He says the indirect costs related to office politics are estimated at 100 billion with a B dollars per year. Some observers put them substantially higher. He says office politics thrive in low trust environments. In fact, in many ways, politics is an antonym for trust. When you hear that, that's the end of his quote, so I'm going to just share some thoughts. But when you hear that, politics is, the, is an antonym for trust. I mean, it means the opposite. And I remember in all the organizations I worked in, 
we always had office politics, you call it, right? It's what Covey's talking about right here. The politics. And it ain't just in the office. It's politics in the field and out on the shop floor, too, between leaders. It's usually between leaders and other leaders or between leaders and their team members. But it's also between the frontline workforce. There's politics going on right there. People trying to get ahead of other other people. So they're trying to make people look bad. People pointing out people who ain't doing the, the job or, or wanting a leader to think they ain't doing the job. It's politics on every level. So if you're in the workforce, you're out in the field, you're on the front lines, you're thinking politics only just in the office. No, they're out there where you're working too. You might just call it something different, but it's all the same. It's all the same. So low trust, according to Covey, get back into another quote from Covey, low trust creates disengagement, which leads to turnover. Remember I said that's people firing the boss. Back to his quote. Let me just start over. I'm going to quit adding my thoughts in the quote. I try not to do that, but these these quotes provoke thought in me just like I'm sharing them to provoke thought in you. Then I'm going to stop talking about it, but I'm going to have to go back. So let's start over. I'm just going to read the quote. Low trust creates disengagement, which leads to turnover, particularly of the people you least want to lose. It's trust that turns a group of people into a team. Performers like to be trusted, and they like to work in high-trust environments. When they're not trusted, it's insulting to them, and a significant number will ultimately seek employment where they are trusted. There's a lot. There's a lot in that quote. I want to talk about that that first line though, where low trust creates disengagement, which leads to turnover, particularly of the people you least want to lose. Talk about your A players, your best players, your high performers. If you're a leader, and 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 you got a lot of low trust and disengagement on your team, that means you're okay with it. If you wasn't, it wouldn't be that way. You would have people engaged and you would have high trust on your team. Whatever's happening on your team as a leader, you've co-signed for it. You co-signed. It's okay. That's the least That's the least that I expect. What, whatever you get, whatever the worst behavior and worst character on your team is, that's what the leader gets credit for because the leader has co-signed and said, that's, that's as good as you got to be to be on this team. Anything above that, the individual gets gets credit for that because the individual is choosing to rise above the least on among the team. High performers, though, they don't they don't want to put up with that mess. They got options. But he says, when they're not trusted, it's insulting to them. And a significant number will ultimately seek employment where they are trusted. It's called the law of the lid. John Maxwell talks about it. I talked about it. You know, I learned it from John. I love that law of the lid. Basically says the organization can't rise any higher than the lid on the organization. And that, that's a lesson in it right there from uh, Covey's quote that I shared. It's an example of the law of the lid. Meaning people who have a higher degree of character, higher degree of trust, higher degree of understanding what high performance teams are, those people ain't staying on a low performing team with a low impact leader. They, they're going to move on because they got options. So the organization stays at the same level. The people who truly could transform the organization are the ones that's always leaving. That's why it's so important to grow and develop leaders. If you're a high level leader, an owner or a CEO or upper level management, you got a lot of folks reporting to you. You got to understand it's going to cost you to develop people, but it's going to cost you a whole lot more not to develop people. And if you've been developing yourself, you already know that. If you don't know that, that means you need to get to work on yourself. And if you do enough work on yourself, at some point, you're going to figure that out and you're going to start developing your folks. Until then, the people on your team who are developing themselves, even though you're not, they're going to outgrow you and they're going to leave. The organization is not going to get any better. Don't stay the same or worse. Covey says employee turnover represents a huge cost for organization and in low trust cultures. 
Turnover is often significantly higher than the industry or market average and several times higher than in high tr uh, trust cultures. What are you saying there in low, co low trust cultures? It's going to be a whole lot more turnover. I've been talking about that. That's kind of the theme of this podcast. Turnover is expensive. When you're having to replace people, retrain people, re you got to do recruiting, training. Then there's going to be quality issues, production issues, all, all safety issues, all kind of thing happen with turnover that adds a ton of cost. But when you develop people, it's like a one line item almost. You see how much does it cost to put the people in training? How much does it cost to deliver the training? That's the cost. Easy, easy to measure. But when you don't develop people, it's hard to measure the cost of not developing people because it's all the stuff I just talked about and a whole lot more. It's turnover. It's, it's low productivity. It's scrap issues, quality issues, I should say, safety issues, disruption amongst the team, disengagement, people not showing up for work, but doing just the bare minimum to keep their job low trust, all that stuff. You figure out how to measure that and you can be a, a billionaire. It's hard to measure. Easy to measure how much it costs to develop somebody. Super easy. It's going to be on expense report somewhere. It's going to be in, in your accounting files, how much you had to pay to bring a speaker in or send somebody to a conference or buy a book or put people in a room 15 minutes a week for a year how much their salary was times how many people. Oh, that's easy. That's easy. But all this other stuff, when you don't do it, it's, I promise you it's costing you a lot more and you won't understand that until you've developed yourself enough to realize what it's costing you. And then you don't care. You just know, I ain't got to measure that. I ain't got to figure out how to measure it. I know I got to develop the people and myself. Covey says, there are many reasons for disengagement. But one of the biggest reasons is that people simply don't feel trusted. He says disengagement is what happens when people continue to work at a company, but have effectively quit. You may have heard me. I, I teach and speak about that. I call it quit, but stay. You hear these people say, I'm just, I'm just here to get a check. I'm just here to get paid here to do my eight and hit the gate. Today's term. A lot of people call it quiet quitting. It's the same thing. It's all disengagement. People disengage, but continue to work there. Only people going to put up with that is low impact leaders because they have to. They don't have any options. They haven't developed themselves. Why is there so much disengagement? We talked about it earlier, 85% because there's disengaged leaders. I talk about that in all my books. If you want to not be that leader, you check out Blue Collar Leadership and Supervision, Unleash Your Team's Potential. You check out 10 Values of High Impact leaders check out blue collar leadership and teamwork leading yourself and others through change our book change happens tons of books and resources to, to help you move beyond this and it doesn't matter what level you're at you're going to benefit from this but if you're a formal authority leader do yourself and your team a favor and develop yourself it ain't that hard but until you value it it ain't going to happen so I'm going to leave you with this longer quote from Stephen Covey, Stephen M.R. Covey. To wrap up this episode, he says, churn is the turnover of stakeholders other than employees. He's using that word churn. He says, when trust inside or outside an organization is low, it gets perpetuated in interaction in the marketplace, causing greater turnover among customers, suppliers, distributors, and investors. This is increasingly becoming an issue as social media platforms and other technologies effectively empower both employees and customers to communicate their experiences to the world. In simple terms, that, that, that wraps up his quote. In simple terms, he's talking about social media. Everybody's talking about everybody. You can't hide who you are. You can't hide how you treat your people. You can't hide how you treat your customers, your suppliers, your investors your team members, your employees, everybody knows because that's what people do. They talk. They talk about things. They talk about people. So I hope this was lesson was thought-provoking for you. The, the key takeaway is 
you need to grow and develop yourself so that more people will trust you and you will trust the right people. And you, you create trust with everyone on your team and, and you lead in a way that you create trust among the team members so that they begin to, te- to trust each other more. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Talk to you next time. Make it happen or someone else will. It might as well be you. Are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond? Check out Max Story's Blue Collar Leadership Series books and others now available on audio along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Max books, programs, special offers, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.